Thank you all for coming. Thank you to uh, Michael Bardsley and David Narkowitz for coming today. We really appreciate it. And a big thank you to Tom Herman, who provided the state room here today and is sponsoring this, this forum. Thank you for everybody to coming out today. Um, the weather this weekend might be a trick, but um, the mayoral forum that you're going to hear today is going to be a real treat for us. So thank you for coming out. I'm the uh, your moderator today. I am the executive director of the Sexual Minorities Archives, which is a national collection of LGBT literature, history, and art in Northampton. Um, one of the organizers and the co-organizer is Jean Savarese from Outbooks on Wheels. Jean? Thank you. Um, it's okay. It's all right. Um, Outbooks on Wheels is a, a volunteer-led effort of um, LGBT books that are LGBT-themed or LGBT-authored, and we bring them to elders in our community. So it's a pleasure for me to be a part of this today. Glad all of you came out. <laughs> And I, I think what our two organizations have in common, the archives and the um, mobile lending library services, education and information and knowledge in our community. So this um, event is something that really fits into, into those parameters for us. Okay, uh, so I'm basically a moderator and I'll keep track of, of time. There is a system to this forum and I, I'd like to tell you what the ground rules are. First of all, please turn off your cell phones or electronic devices during the event. Please, no food or drink within the state room. Um, please try to leave through the side door or come into the side door, unless you're a wheelchair user, in which case you'd use the front door. Um, the uh, videotaping will be done today by NCTV. You'll be filming the forum. If anyone objects to being filmed, would you please raise your hand so the videographer can avoid taping you? Anyone? Okay, that's good. That makes it easy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> So I, uh, the opening remarks by the, by the candidates have been determined by a coin toss. And David Narkowitz will speak first for three to five minutes, and followed by Michael Barsley, who will speak for three to five minutes. We will use the reverse order for closing remarks. And what else you should know is that please no applauding at all during the forum until the very end of the event. That will really help us to use the time that we have efficiently. Following the opening remarks, people in the audience can line up at the microphone, which is to the rear there on the side, and ask one question. Uh, you can direct your question at one of the candidates. So when you come up to the microphone, state your name and ask the candidate your question. And the candidate will respond for 90 seconds, and, th and then the other candidate will also respond for 90 seconds. Please limit your question to one minute. Try not to be making statements. Just ask a question that you're curious about. We have handed out index cards for you to write your questions on. If you still need an index card and don't have one, you can find them by the microphone on the couch along with some pens. We are going to close the forum at 4.30 promptly. And if someone has not had all their questions and answers or think they have more questions, you can feel free to write them on the index card with your contact information, indicate which candidate you want to respond, and please give them to me. And I'll make sure the candidates, campaigns get those questions. At the end, the candidates will have two minutes for the closing remarks. So let us begin. 
with Mr. Narkowitz for his opening statement for three to five minutes, please. Thank you very much, Dave, for coming. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, I want to start by thanking uh, you, Ben, and, and Jean for organizing today's event and for everybody uh, weathering the, the storm out there to come out and be with us today. This forum on social justice and civil rights is very fitting for Northampton, a city which has a long and distinguished progressive history. In the 1840s, the most radical utopian community in the country was established in Florence. The Northampton Association for Education and Industry was committed to equality of race, class, gender, and religion. And it was in this community that drew abolitionists Sojourner Truth and David Ruggles to settle here. Florence also had the earliest integrated baseball team in America, the Florence Eagles. Our city has been home to many movers for social change. Lydia Maria Child, a prominent women's rights activist and writer, lived on Elm Street during the 1830s. Today, Frances Crow, the noted peace and environmental activist, lives here and, and, and leads by example every day. And just in the last few weeks, the Trans Civil Rights March, Occupy Northampton, Slut Walk Northampton, and Stand Up for Tibet has shown us that the spirit of activism is very much alive in our community. Northampton has also earned acclaim as home to a strong and vibrant lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community. Decades of work by LGBT people and their allies have gone into making this happen, and it has not been without struggle. Smith College professor Newton Arwood was arrested in the 1960s for the possession of gay literature and photographs. During the first Pride March, some marchers had to wear paper bags to protect their identities. And the defeat of the Domestic Partnership Ordinance in 1995 was a bitter moment for many. But less than 20 years later, we live in a state with equal marriage, and in a city that has elected an openly gay mayor and city councilors, and is at the vanguard of advancing LGBT equality. I can never know what it's like to live the life of an LGBT person, but I know exactly what it's like to be a straight ally. I credit my time as a student at UMass Amherst for attuning me to the LGBT issues. Like many young straight Americans in the 1970s and 1980s, I grew up largely unaware of the struggles of lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender Americans. Events like the Stonewall Riots or the assassination of Harvey Milk were not part of the history that I had been taught. I put this newfound knowledge and awareness into action as a resident assistant. I tried to support LGBT students, LGBT students and tried to be both a resource and an ally for them. This included peer teaching a course on diversity and acceptance in my dorm. I've continued to be an ally throughout my adult life, working in support of issues and candidates at the national, state, and local level to advance civil rights. I've served on the staffs of four Democratic members of Congress, including Congressman John Olver. John has been a friend, a mentor, and a role model for me. And this week, he's been rightly recognized for his many accomplishments. Chief among them has been his unwavering commitment to civil and human rights. Since being elected to the city council, I have voted in support of every measure affecting human, political, and civil rights before the council. I have marched in pride every year to express not only my personal support, but also city government support for the LGBT community. I was really proud most recently as acting mayor to march in the, in the Trans Rights March and rally. I support the Transgender Equal Rights Bill pending in the Massachusetts Legislature. And earlier this summer, I worked with the Human Rights Commission in my role as council president to bring a resolution before the Northampton City Council supporting that legislation and was proud that it earned unanimous support. There are many other LGBT issues that we must recognize and address as a community. One minute. We, have, we must have zero tolerance for the bullying of any child straight or LGBT. We need to work together to ensure fair hiring, accommodations, and workplace practices for all citizens. We need to work together to ensure that our elders, both LGBT and straight, are treated with respect and dignity. And we need to work together until we have equal marriage at the federal level. One of the many things that makes our community great is its strong commitment to diversity and equal rights for all people. As mayor, I will work with people across Northampton to build on this and the many other strengths we have as a community to move our great city forward. I thank everyone for coming here today, and I thank the organizers for putting this together, and I look forward to the conversation.
Thank you very much, David. Michael, give me five minutes, please. I, too, uh, wish to uh, thank the organizers of uh, today's forum. So thank you, Beth, and thank you, Jean, for putting this together and taking the initiative. Uh, today, uh, looking at this room with members of the LGBT community and their allies, uh, I remember a, another gathering of our community about 15 years ago. That gathering, held at the Unitarian Church, occurred after the citizens of Northampton had repealed the D domestic partnership ordinance in the municipal election of uh, November 1995. There was a lot of anger, frustration, bitterness, and fear in the LGBT community after the uh, defeat of the DPO. Community members came together that afternoon to express their disappointment and anger and fear and to support one another and to consider next steps. I was one of several speakers who encouraged the people attending that meeting to respond to the defeat as a challenge, to get more involved in the mainstream community, to break through the barriers of isolation and separation and alienation, to get involved in neighborhood groups and civic organizations, to participate in our local government, to become involved in local political activity. Those of us in that room were united because we had a common enemy. We felt our rights had been attacked. Here we are 15 years later. The circumstances are very different. The LGB part of the community, not so much the P part, but the, the lesbian, gay, bisexual part of the community has become very integrate, integrated into the general Northampton uh, community. And the transgender part of the community has made uh, some strides with a lot more to go. GLBT folks are engaged in virtually every aspect of Northampton. The angry, painful debate about the DPO that occurred 15 years ago seems very remote uh, to most people today. Even the concept of the DPO um, has been made irrelevant by gay marriage. Our community has experienced much success, and a result of that success, we have become very comfortable here um, as a community in Northampton. And ironically, out of that comfort, we have um, has uh, happened what I call a, a political divide within our community. And the political division affecting Northampton is really reflected in this year's election. I would ask that each of us consider how this uh, division came to be. From my perspective, it is much more than personality politics. The good news is that many in this room have worked very hard, and many others, have worked very hard to overcome the oppression and discrimination associated with sexual orientation and gender identity. The challenging news is that increasingly there is evidence of another type of division in Northampton, and that's a class division. Working middle class folks, individuals and families, LGBT as well as straight, One minute. are finding in Northampton an increasingly difficult place to live, economically, socially, culturally, and politically. Many feel excluded and alienated. There are some members of the, uh, the LGBT community have uh, experienced a great degree of financial security, and their experience of Northampton is very different than some of the other folks. Okay. So I suggest that this class divide is a new challenge, both as a nation and as a community. And it is most definitely a social justice issue we must address. 
has been mentioned increasingly um, in, the, uh, in the press, the, the incidents in terms of Occupy Northampton, and we have a uh, Senate candidate who is now addressing the struggles of the work middle class. So looking forward, these are the issues we need to address. Thank you very much, Bob. Appreciate it. Okay, so now those of you with questions, if you would please line up at the microphone and you'll have a minute at the most to ask your question. Please state your name and who you would like to direct your question to, who will then respond first and then the other candidate will also respond. Uh, my name is Ray Dronowski, and this question is for uh, uh, David Narkowitz. Although you are a member of the uh, LGBT community, you've always been a tremendous ally to us. You state on your website that more work must be done before LGBT citizens have equal rights and opportunities. Can you give our community more specific details on how you plan to accomplish that as the mayor of Northampton? Thanks for the question, Ray. Um, well, certainly there's, there is a lot more work to be done, both at the federal level and the local level. Um, and certainly at the federal level, uh, still faced with DOMA and, and, the, and the challenges that, that pose to people. Um, and and uh, I know that Congressman Frank is working to, um, to, to implement an Employee Non-Discrimination Act, which will have an impact on the entire country. Um, so those are some challenges that we still need to be advocating for here locally at the federal level. But here locally, um, particularly uh, uh, in the transgender community. I know that there are still issues around accommodations, around uh, local services. I had the opportunity at the uh, trans rally to speak with some folks who had talked to me about um, some of the issues that they face, uh, whether it's in local health clubs or uh, in other public areas, uh, and those challenges. Um, and that's, a, that's an issue that I know our Human Rights Commission um, is working very uh, clearly and strongly on, and I would try to work with them as the mayor uh, to try to support um, breaking through some of those barriers uh, to provide equality uh, and access for people. Um, and obviously, uh, the issue of, of, of bullying uh, that we've all, uh, particularly bullying of, of LGBT students, which, uh, which we've all become so acutely aware of uh, with some of the, the tragic suicides that have happened around the country. I know we've com committed ourselves in Northampton to really focusing on this issue of bullying. I have two kids in the school, and, and, and there's a, a lot of work being done around climate and around you know, trying to provide a safe place for all students. And that's something I would be firmly committed to as the mayor, uh, to make sure that we uh, provide a safe place for people to, to learn uh, in, our, in our schools. So that's a couple of examples. Obviously, hiring. Um, and and the, the mayor has a lot of power over appointing people to city boards. I think we've got a great history of having very diverse diversity in those. Um, and I try to continue that as mayor as well. Thank you, David. Thank you very much. Michael? In terms of the, uh, the work to be done, I, I look at it in two categories. One category is around uh, policies and, and laws that need to be changed. Um, probably the, the biggest challenge right now is the statewide law guiding transgender rights, and I'm a big supporter of that. And I will, um, I was the uh, counselor who brought the ordinance change forward, um, I think it was five years ago, and helped work to get that adopted in the city, and I will work on, um, work on the adoption of it statewide. Um, in terms of other uh, uh, policies, I think we constantly have to look at uh, things that we need improve and do monitor that. I am the uh, uh, counsel who brought forward the Human Rights Commission. I know some recently my work on that has been uh, questioned. And in case anybody, being a teacher, I do always do a little bit of show and tell. In case anybody uh, would like to check the, uh, the historical record, you can see that I indeed was the leader for the effort for the human rights. We put together a packet that was prepared for the ad hoc committee City of Northampton Human Rights Study Committee, Michael Barnes, and I didn't put it together, the mayor's office could have put it together, but I was the person who really took the lead in making the Human Rights Commission uh, happen, so we can discuss that if you, for those of you who are questioning it. Um, another aspect is just the one-to-one -one personal stuff. Homophobia and other sense of prejudice, 
uh, still alive and well, even in North Hampton. Uh, one of my campaign supporters up in Florence, uh, somebody walked by <coughs> and turned around and said, this guy's not going to win because he's a homo. Okay? That happened from one of my uh, uh, opponent supporters in a little bit of a back and forth in the center of Florence. Um, a couple of uh, folks have said to me, uh, uh, gay folks have said to me that they weren't, um, uh, they were considering not supporting me. Tell <laughs> people, I'll get back to <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Hi, I'm Barbara Allen. This is a question for both of you. Um, in this morning's Gazette, um, there was a story that carried, there was a story about two women. Um, and unfortunately, it was a real sad story about one of the two women, it's a lesbian relationship. One of them was murdered. Um, it was in today's Gazette. Um, so I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about part of that story um, talked about, whether it's true or not, but anyway, it talked about domestic violence. Um, in that relationship. And so uh, I'd like to hear from you your um, thoughts about LGBT uh, domestic violence or prevention or what you see your role uh, is in that situation, in that topic. Who wants to start? I'll start. Okay. You have two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. The, uh, <coughs> the domestic violence um, is an area where I have played a supportive role on a number of different occasions, working with different institutions, different in individuals. And there are some uh, dynamics that I think are different for uh, gay men and for lesbians and, for, and I imagine transgender. I don't know too much about transgender issues around domestic uh, violence. I think we need to continue to look at the, the different factors that go into that. Sometimes it's um, alcohol abuse, sometimes there's other stresses going on there. So we constantly need to um, be looking at uh, what are the stress factors. We also need to look at the support services. There's a lot of times people who are uh, lesbian, gay, transgender do not feel comfortable in um, accessing some of the other uh, uh, support agencies that may be out there. So we, we constantly have to look at that and have a dialogue about that as a, as a community. Um, when I was in uh, high school, one of my uh, responsibilities was to um, lead a, a, a committee to look at what we call the well-being issues that were affecting high school students. And we developed, uh, we identified the issues, we developed a model and um, where people who were experiencing them uh, who um, could have access to, and people who were re first responders, they knew what the protocols were, and that goes a long way in addressing those type of problems. So I will sit down with the, uh, the various uh, social agencies in the, in the committee, uh, community, as well as the police force and others, and make sure that we have a uniform response to dealing with those issues. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, obviously, um, that's, I've read that story, and, and this issue of domestic violence now um, is, a, is, a, is, a, is a new challenge for, for, for our um, law enforcement, for people that are in the judicial justice system that they now have to be aware of and have to, to face. And so I think the key is, um, is, is, for, is training and education for our law enforcement officers, uh, for prosecutors, uh, for people to sort of understand uh, this issue and understand that, uh, you know, sort of the old norm of, of um, you know, coming to, a, arriving at a scene where there was a domestic violence incident and, and um, you know, the, the, assuming that the man should be locked up, well, when you come to a scene and there's two men, uh, that's a different dynamic for many police officers. And, and so I think that requires a lot of training. I think I'm really proud of our police department. I think we have a really progressive police force that that is focused on these issues, but obviously as mayor, I'd want to make sure that we provided them with the best training and the most up-to-date training to really be sensitive to those kinds of issues, um, including issues around you know, trans um, and, and um, trans violence as well. Uh, I also am um, uh, really proud of, of our new DA, Dave Sullivan, who has really made it a point during his campaign to really focus on civil rights and social justice and, and the DA's office has always had a strong component dealing with domestic violence. And I know that he's committed to also uh, making sure that that umbrella of domestic violence is expanded to include 
um, so. LGBT domestic violence. So I know that I would be committed as mayor uh, to working with our police department to make sure that they have the training uh, and the skills that they need to really deal with these issues sensitively, but also to work collaboratively and in partnership with the district attorney, who I also know is committed to these issues. Thanks for the question. Thank you. Hi, my name is Valerie Sloan, and I'm from Florence, Mass. <coughs> and this um, question goes out to both of you. Um, I am a trans transgender woman. I'm 46 years old, <coughs> and I've been fighting all my life for my rights. And um, just recently, I, I was told that I have no rights. And as a trans woman, I'm very oppressed by that. Um, I would think that I fought in all my life that I would have something, and I have nothing. Um, I want to know what the two of you will do for trans rights, and um, I want to know how you're going to make things change. I want to be treated as one, not an individual. Um, and this is my question. Okay. Um, do you want me to go first this time? Go ahead. Can we just swap in? Yes. Let's just alternate. Okay. If, well, if they don't specify. Okay. okay. Well, thank you very much for that question. And, and I don't know the specific situation, um, but I, I feel for you and I'm happy to talk to you afterwards about it and, and see if there's any way that I can help. Um, in, terms of, in terms of what I'm committed to at the local level, obviously I talked about it in my opening remarks that uh, there's strong support within the city and on the city council for the, new, for the trans civil rights bill that's pending in Massachusetts, which will extend uh, the same rights that, that we've fought for, for gay, lesbian, bisexuals, to transgender as well. Um, and I'll continue to support that and continue to, uh, to try to advance that. I also would, would work with the Human Rights Commission to deal with whatever specific case that you have, and the police department if necessary. Um, if there's a specific issue of discrimination or in accommodation or in workplace, uh, I would be committed to working with you and any other citizen that comes forward with that kind of an issue to try to help you resolve it. Um, so again, I, I apologize that that's happened, and uh, in, in our city, I know that our city is, is better than that, and I'd be happy to work with you to try to figure out what the problem is and try to address it uh, with, with all the resources that we have to assist. Thank you. Thank you. Michael. Valerie, uh, thank you for the question, and uh, thank you for being a valuable member of our community. Um, and I'm going to disagree with you a little bit. You do have rights. I think the issue is that other people don't recognize that. And that's what we need to address. And part of it is education, and part of it is changing the rules. So wherever, whatever forum that you need me at, I will go with you, and I will meet with the people on which you're having a problem. Um, it is very difficult for oppressed people to deal with the issue entirely alone. They need a support person. They need someone who understands their issue and go, uh, goes with them. I have been an advocate all my uh, professional career for struggling students in the school system. I founded the Gay Straight Alliance in Amherst Regional High School. I have worked with uh, colleagues who were dealing with coming out of students. Um, as I said, I founded uh, I was a leader in founding the Human Rights Commission here in Northampton. So I am uh, very experienced in going forward and, and playing a role as an advocate, and I will do that for you. So um, we'll, we'll talk about it, whatever that issue is, and you, I'll pledge my ongoing support. 30 seconds. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Krista Helpers. I'm the owner of the and the CEO of the Miss Trans New England pageant here in the North Hampton New England area. Um, my question basically is: um, I've also been on the board of Trans Pride since the beginning of the Trans Civil March when it started four years ago, and I haven't seen like David like be that involved. And so my question to you is like. If you do become mayor, will you be more visible so that people like myself who've been in the community for four or five years like actually get to know you? Because I've never even seen you, I've never met you. And I do know partly you have been a visible person in the transgender community. And you know, so that would be my question, I guess, to you 
both of you, is what do you guys really plan to do, like, for the trans community and people as well? Okay, thank you. I think that's the day of the first. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the question, and I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to meet and, and haven't had a chance to learn about me and my record and the things that I've done. Um, as I said earlier, I, I um, most recently participated in the trans civil rights rally in March and, and was proud in my limited role as acting mayor to be able to, to participate in that and then participate in the rally after and read a proclamation on behalf of the city and, and listen to some of the great presentations that, that happened that day. Um, and, and again, I, I, if, if elected mayor, I want to continue that and continue to learn more about the issues and the struggle that, that the transgender community face. I, I, I'm not an expert on it. I don't claim to be an expert on it. Um, but I'm somebody who cares deeply about people and about our community and about everyone in our community. Um, and, I'm, and I'm willing to learn about those issues and be an advocate for them and to make sure that, that our city uh, continues to be a welcoming place, an accepting place for everybody in the community, um, you know, regardless of, uh, of sexual orientation or sexual identity or, or any of those issues. I, I will be committed to doing that, and, and I hope we have an opportunity to speak even after today. Because I'd like that opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Um, I, I think, as you know, Krista, even before I think at we met, I, I participated in the, in the first transgender project. I, and in fact, I canceled a commitment I had that weekend to be somewhere else so I could uh, walk in the first march. Um, in 2009, I was a speaker at, uh, at the march. <laughs> Um, I attended your uh, event about a month ago at the high school, and I uh, participated in this year's march. Um, I have a deep uh, personal commitment that I'm not going to talk about, um, respect for other people, but uh, that in terms of the, uh, the issue of uh, transgender, and I have uh, struggled with it, and I've helped and been very supportive of other people in terms of their personal journey and trying to relate to our society and the issues that are connected with it. So um, you can uh, count on my solid commitment and understanding of, of the issue and standing up for your, your rights. And I just wanted to say to a personal level, thank you for all that you have done in the community and because I think you're, you are a pioneer and you have to be applauded for what you've done. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Adams, my question is for Michael. 79% of transgender youth in K-12 Massachusetts schools were harassed in 2009, as studied by NCTE and the National Game Lesson Experts Panel. As mayor, how will you work with the schools in Northampton to prevent bullying based on student gender expression or sexual orientation? Thank you, Michael. Um, as I referenced in, uh, I think previously, uh, when I worked in the uh, I worked in public schools for 33 years, I'm not enough in the Hills, and there I started a, um, uh, the Gay Straight Alliance, uh, which also included uh, transgender uh, youth, and um, a big role of that was uh, education of the adults in the building. Uh, we did a survey to try to do a kind of a needs assessment. And um, the 75% uh, of the, the faculty agreed with statements that said they were very supportive of uh, LGBT youth, but they had never taught one uh, in their classrooms. So obviously that defined the problem for us very quickly with one of awareness and uh, I, you know, the, the visibility. So we did some workshops and changed that environment. So that's one of the things in terms of orange. And then it's putting in support networks. So people feel they know where to go, who to go to if there's, a, if there's an issue. And so it's ongoing training and it's, um, it's visibility. Uh, I looked at the, uh, the bullying issue in, in South Hadley and my um, response to that is bullying occurs because the people in the upper position let it happen. You need to take a very strong no tolerance uh, position on that and have that go, go down through all the various people who are in charge of various aspects of the school. 
Very and I will set that definitely as the leader of the community. Uh, Northampton has a program that does some good work, but they, you constantly have to be a vigilant on that. And that is something I have done and I will continue to do. Thank you very much. Thank you for that great question. And, and, um, and certainly, uh, this issue of bullying in schools is, is an important one. It's, it, it affects every family in Northampton, and obviously, it's something that we have to focus on. And it's something our school administrators and teachers are working on. Um, uh, it's, we actually we have a gay straight alliance not only at the high school but at the, at the middle school where my kids go to school. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of there is some awareness about it now. There's kids that are working on it. There, there are educators that are working on it. Um, but it's something we have to remain focused on. Uh, we have to work, I have to work as mayor with our superintendent, with our school committee, uh, with our police department. Um, we had some really good news last week in the city in that the, the police department has, uh, has indicated that they're, they're going to be able to restore what's called a, a student resource officer from the police department in the schools. Um, and a lot of the work that they do is around uh, bully prevention and having a presence in the school to, to make sure that violence doesn't occur. Um, and one of the things that came out of the, the resolution that we did um, around transgender rights was, was some real shocking, I think, education for the public. Um, in, our, in, our, in our resolution, it was pointed out that transgender youth in K-12 through schools in Massachusetts, 79% had experienced harassment, 31% were physically assaulted, and 11% had left school altogether because of the harassment. And I think any, everybody in our community find, would have to find that unacceptable we have to do better. Um, and, and I would commit to working as mayor to make sure that our schools are safe and welcoming and a place that kids can go to learn um, regardless of, of their sexual identity or sexual orientation. And that's my commitment to you. So thank you for the question. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Andrea Fox. Um, I have a question for Michael. Um, I, I was really interested in your um, focus on class division and about, um, you know, that's where you feel like things are headed in terms of focus for, you know, as I understood what you said. And, you know, clearly that's what's happening in the whole nation. People are starting to wake up and go, wait a minute, you know, a lot of us don't have jobs, a lot of us are working for DM, a lot of us are, you know, underclass, under earners, uh, or unemployed. And, um, you know, in my son's school, we are, I, I believe, one of the, um, we have the highest rate of children in in this district with um, school lunch, uh, preschool lunch, and, and uh, needs for economics. And, um, and we see that in different ways. I mean, there's kids that come to school without coats and sneakers for gym, and um, you know, children who live in the complexes nearby who are one day here, one day not, because they can't pay their rent for other reasons. And um, so clearly there, there's a lot of economic reasons for where we are today. And, um, so I guess having said that and sort of following up on how you were introducing yourself, I was just curious to know what your specific support would be for families in our community, uh, what program services plans you have on an individual level to assist these families to becoming more, um, more successful uh, in our community. Because uh, clearly there's a need that you pointed out. And, um, and I'm not sure I, I agree totally with how you framed it in terms of I don't see a lot of elite people in North Hampton, and, uh, you know, but then again, I guess maybe I won't see that. But nonetheless, uh, so my question, if you understand, is you know, how do you plan to specifically help families in need in this community? Thank you. Uh, well, problems don't get solved unless they get identified and it's written and addressed. So I think the first step is, is identifying what I see as a problem and trying to generate a community uh, discussion around it. I, I, when I go around and uh, listen to people, talk to people, listen to people, um, I hear from a lot of people, who, some of whom have already left this community because they want to stay here, and others who feel like they're going to have to leave the place that they feel comfortable living, but they can't support themselves or can't afford to stay here. Um, I think the city government has a responsibility to use our uh, financial and our human resources, and as well as our environmental resources, very wisely. Uh, in the economic part of it, I think it goes to budgeting, it goes to looking at um, developing other 
uh, revenue stream, so you don't always have to go back to a, uh, an override and to increase property taxes. Um, it also uh, looks at economic development and really making sure there are jobs here where people uh, can afford to stay, that there are sustainable jobs. That probably is probably the single uh, most significant uh, factor in that. There are more and more people who are finding it hard to meet their uh, financial responsibilities. And it, it, so it's not just the ones that have existed five years ago, it's, there's more um, adding that on a daily basis like you're doing. So that's what I think we need to do as a government in terms of having that discussion, with the other uh, agencies, but also as a, uh, as a government, we have some responsibilities that I think that we could improve in the way we operate and what we do. Thank you. David? Yeah, um, just, just last week I, um, I attended the school committee meeting and the various principals presented their school improvement plans and sort of their, their um, uh, overview of the schools. And, and uh, you referenced Jackson Street School and the fact that 41% of the kids there are, are low income. Um, same thing for Bridge Street School, same number, 41% uh, low income. Uh, so, you know, it's definitely an issue in our schools, many kids coming to school, um, you know, maybe not having the, the preparation or, 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 as you said, uh, lunch uh, that we have to provide for them. And again, this whole issue of, of, of economic disparity in the community, I think it comes back to, as a city government, you know, how do we continuously focus on how do we provide economic opportunity for economic opportunity and housing. Um, I think we've been a leader in terms of uh, trying to provide affordable housing for people. I was talking to a, a downtown business owner and he was uh, sort of reminiscing about the differences from 10 years ago to now and the fact that on a big snowstorm like today, um, he'd never have to close because most people that worked in his restaurant lived in town and that 10 years later many of them don't live in town anymore because, because they can't afford to. Um, and so that's an issue that we have to continuously work on, providing economic opportunity, you know, trying to not only support the local businesses that we have, but also trying to look at ways to bring in new job opportunities for people that pay a living Pretty wage. Um, I was proud earlier this year on the city council to support the living wage uh, resolution, updating it to recognize businesses in our community that do pay a living wage and encourage others to do that as well. Um, and obviously we have to also continue to provide the full range of support services uh, to families that are in need. Uh, and I think Northampton's been a leader in that, and I would continue that in a final manner uh, to make sure that Northampton remains livable and affordable for anyone at every rung of the economic ladder. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, my name is Joyce Saban Russian. This question is for both of you. Um, it's regarding youth, um, gay, um, lesbian, bisexual, transgender, and straight youth. Do um, either of you acknowledge that there is a problem with drugs in Northampton? And would you, if you were mayor, consider asking the assistance of the state police task force like Holyoke and Springfield do? Um, Michael, let's start. Because, uh, the first. Okay, sorry. Letter. Okay. David. Thank you, Gene, for the question, and, and definitely this is a, a Joyce. Joyce, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, thank you for the question, and, um, and and definitely the issue of drugs is a, is a major one that we have to focus on. Um, I know that it's an issue um, in the schools that that our that the folks in the schools are concerned about. Um, we have a, a newly formed prevention coalition uh, that that came out of the work of, of other organizations and. I had the chance to attend one of their meetings recently, and they've been doing a lot of work around uh, not only focusing on this issue, doing surveys around this issue, but really trying to change the mindset of parents uh, and of children about, um, and, I, and it's been, it's been eye-opening for me as a parent, um, just looking at some of the, the norms and some of the mindsets of, of children's perceptions, parents' perceptions of what's happening in our schools and what's happening among youth. Um, uh, so it, it's a, it's, it is an important issue. I know that our police department is committed to, to working on it, to address it. 
Um, I, I don't know a lot about the task force that you're, that you're talking about. I do know that Northampton participates in regional drug-related task force uh, in, terms of, in terms of trying to work on this issue regionally. I don't know the specifics of what you're referring to, and I'd be happy to talk to you about it later. Um, but you know, suffice it to say, it, it, it is an important issue that we have to acknowledge. Um, and I know that you've had a very personal experience with this. Um, and, and we want to make sure that that doesn't happen to any of our children in our schools or in our community. And I'd be committed to working on that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the question, Joyce. And uh, thank you for being a, uh, an advocate and a champion on that issue and, and not letting us forget. Um, I'm a, a member of the uh, Northampton Prevention Coalition which is an organization in Northampton that is uh, committed to uh, preventing the use of drug alcohol by youth. And um, it is a prevention uh, effort. And it is uh, working with the school, but it's a community uh, organization. And they, they are doing uh, quite a bit. It's relatively new. Um, it, uh, it's a spin-off of the Spiffy organization down on Holly Street. And I was a, a member of that and have worked around prevention issues around uh, for, for youth. But the problem in Northampton is more than, more than that because it's not just youth. It's evidence of uh, drugs in a number of different uh, areas. All you have to do is uh, read the newspaper and see the various uh, uh, enforcement interventions that, uh, that have happened. So there is a problem. I would. Um, not ignore any potential resource. So I would sit down and see what, um, how the community could benefit, um, how we could utilize whatever uh, services that they have, and I would definitely do that in conjunction with our own uh, law enforcement agencies. 30 seconds. Um, uh, but it, it is a, it's a problem. It's very, uh, it, it has um, caused a lot of hardship and damage to a lot of families. And we need to be uh, more proactive, and we can't be in denial about this problem. I think it's more, I don't think our problem is any more than any other community, but I think it's more than we want to admit that it is. And anybody who hangs out downtown can see it on a daily basis. Thank you. My name is Randall Farash Stewart, and I live in Florence. Uh, I'm a teacher and a Gage Trade Alliance advisor, although not in the Northampton schools, in a different school district. Um, recently, in that capacity, though, I had a student come out to me as transgender. And um, the student pointed out, um, being in a school, it's very difficult. He was having difficulty accessing uh, a restroom during the day because the restrooms are gendered. And um, changing for gym class, mm -hmm. things like that. And I think, um, and I was just wondering, um, I guess I could direct this, um, to David first, um, because you had mentioned the statistics about transgender students uh, facing bullying. Um, I, I think that um, transgender students in schools face a unique set of challenges. I was wondering what you can do as mayor, as the leader of the city government, to help make sure that um, students in Northampton public schools are protected regardless of gender identity and expression, um, that transgender students specifically are safe. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you for the work that you're doing in that other school district to, to work on these issues. Um, certainly, you know, that's a, that, that would be an issue that, that uh, I would be interested in working with the superintendent. And I know the superintendent would be working, interested in working on to try to figure out you know, how, we can, how we can make our school uh, a safe and, and more accepting place and try to figure out in that, in that specific scenario that you described, you know, how we address that. Uh, whether it means trying to come up with a way to um, you know, to provide a safe place for them to use uh, the gym, you know, locker rooms, or, or some kind of bathroom that would allow them to, to do it in a way that's safe. Uh, I think that would be an important thing, and I know that our school administration would be committed to working on that. Um, I know that some, uh, some of our uh, area, um, some, some restrooms in the area, I think at the Unitarian Society, they have um, you know, male and female, but they recognize transgender. Uh, in their restrooms and to let their members and to, to know about that and to make it aware that it's a welcoming place uh, for people that are transgender. 
Um, so I think that's something we're going to have to cross, some, something we're going to have to work on. And I know that in Northampton, uh, people would be really committed to doing that because uh, there is a strong commitment um, in our schools and on behalf of the school administration to figure out ways to make sure that kids are, are safe and, and are accepted and can come to school every day uh, with the same opportunity as every other student to learn, uh, which is why we have schools that we're trying to do. So thank you for the question, and again, thank you for the work that you do. <coughs> Likewise, thank you for the question. The, um, again, as I said uh, previously, uh, I have uh, two ways or two approaches on an issue like this. One is the, the policy part of it, and making sure there are policies in place where it's clear that the rights of um, every student and every faculty person, for that matter, is, is protected, and that it's clear um, to everybody who works in the school of what the policy is, and if there is an infraction of that policy, what should happen. Um, that's one aspect. The other aspect, which often gets over ignored, is the, uh, the, the, the person aspect, the individual aspect. And it's making sure that there is a support system for that individual student. And each, um, if, if there is a policy in place for the uh, uh, solution, sometimes the individual isn't really comfortable with that. You need to go to the individual and ask that individual, what are they comfortable with? What is their solution to the problem? Um, what, at, at that point in time in their life, what do they feel most comfortable uh, doing? I've been in a situation all too often where an individual has been told, well, that's what the policy is and you have to do that. And I'm not a big believer in that. I, I think what we need to do is have flexible policies, especially in situations um, where the young people are transgender that are going through a lot of changes in their lives. We need to be flexible to accommodate their issues and their comfort level and to work with them to help them. My name is Jasper. I live in room three. Um, I am a heterosexual, and I have a concern regarding use of terminology. And I went through the Amherst school system. I raised the same concern there. The use of the word "straight" to refer to people like me. The opposite of "straight" is "crooked." Do either of you recognize that that could be an issue? And what's your view on that? Who would you like to ask a question? Both. Both. Okay. Terminology, the terminology is always tricky. Um, they, it, it changing um, all the time. I, I remember when, even now um, for gay straight lines, I have problems with that terminology. You know, it, it excludes people. And so the, I, I recognize the, uh, the limitations of our, uh, our terminology, and people are always looking for other words that will um, be either more descriptive, or more informative, or less exclusive or demeaning. So um, I think for a lot of folks, they, uh, they under, understand straight in a uh, different way other than being the opposite of crooked. But um, the, uh, I, I will, you know, I'm always sensitive to the terminology. So if there's another discussion I need to have about the, uh, the correct terminology or a better set of terms to use, I'm more than willing to to do that because a lot of times the terminology sets the mood in, in a discussion and people use that as part of so, um, we can do that. And they also understand that uh, in Amherst, even though it's regarded as a very liberal school system, um, sometimes the issues there are uh, even more difficult to deal with than they can some other um, Again, I, I uh, this is a concern that I hadn't heard before, but it's 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 real to you, and it's something that, that concerns you. And, and I think it's you know, again, I'd be happy to talk to you about it afterwards. I think it's a term straight that's just sort of evolved as part of the vocabulary. Um, I know there's I know there's uh, even um, within the LGBT community there's debate about terminology and um, you know sort of a newer use of the word queer and whether 
you know, folks, older folks in the in, in that community are comfortable with that language. I know it's, so. There's even differences within the LGBT community about the terminology that they use. So again, when we're talking about trying to come up, when we're talking about these sort of human issues and social issues, um, it's people don't like to be kind of put into labels or put into boxes because everybody, you know, is, is so different and has different views on it. So I can appreciate that the term straight may not appeal to you and you may not like that label. Um, and, and I respect that and, and happy to talk to you about that. Um, but thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Tanya Power, and I want to start by thanking both of you for being yeah. present at the Trans Civil Rights March. Uh, it was very really meaningful, yeah. much more meaningful than we can easily convey um, in this space. But um, yeah. both of you were exceptional in your presence there. The heterosexual ally community did not come out in large numbers. The gay male community did not come out in large numbers. Um, and you both talked about uh, policy issues and what you can do um, as mayor in terms of you know, working with uh, the police department, working with the Human Rights Commission. Uh, but I'm wondering if you have any thoughts about what to do about this widespread community apathy that um, there wasn't a huge turnout of support the way there is for Northampton Pride, which represents the LGBT spectrum. Um, and, and just the fact that that seems to be uh, a pervasive problem, if you have any thoughts on what you could do um, as mayor, and also just what the community could be doing to improve that. Because I'm sure you both have had the opportunity to learn a lot at the Trans Civil Rights March and Rally about transgender experiences, and if people didn't show up, they didn't have that opportunity that you had. So um, it's hard to progress those issues without sharing that education. <laughs> Could you, the, the first part of your question, I, I, I got a little distracted by a little one, and I, I would just take that I'm sorry. Just that you were referring to the, the event that you were referring I was unclear about. Right. Um, that, you know, I, that it seemed like, you know, both of you were exceptional in being there, you know, which I really appreciated that you were. At the, at the trans civil right? okay. Yeah, the okay. trans civil okay. rights march rally, right. Okay. Um, All right, I just, you got gone through a bunch of different things, and I kind of lost my train of thought there, so sorry. Um, am I responding first? Maybe first. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, I think, you know, even in, in the mayor's office, we got, in, we got the invitation a few weeks in advance, and so we knew about it, um, and, and I know that, uh, you know, in speaking to the organizers of this event, uh, they had a real struggle trying to get the local media to even, to cover it, to, to put an ad, to put a notice in the paper about the fact that this event was happening today. Um, so that may have contributed to it. I, I didn't see a lot of press around that particular event. Um, I know there were a lot of people, I think, who, even when I was downtown earlier at the farmer's market, I was talking to different people and saying that I was heading off to, you know, down to Lambert Park and to, 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 for the start, and people didn't even know what was happening. And these were people that I think are generally really tuned into uh, to these kinds of events that are happening. So I think we have to do a better job of, of trying to publicize events and trying to work with the local paper to, to cover LGBT events, uh, including newer events that, that may be happening that may not be on people's radar screen, um, and try to build awareness of them. I hope that by having a city presence there, by having you know, the acting mayor there, uh, that that helps to raise the profile of the event and, and show that this is an important community event. Um, and, uh, and so I think those are the things we have to work on, is, again, as part of the overall education piece to let people know uh, that this is a community that cares about these issues and that this is an important civil rights issue. Um, I'm getting back to the whole city council thing, maybe there's a way that we can do some work Sorry. at the city council level, whether it's renewing our, our, our commitment through the resolution that we passed to also include some mention of the fact or try to time it in a way that falls around the time of the next uh, trans civil rights march so that we can give some added publicity and also give sort of an endorsement from the city at the city council level to let people know about it. But thank you, it's a, it's a <coughs> great question. Thank you. <coughs> I, I think the, uh, the publicity part of it is only a small part. I think a lot of it has to do with people's um, uh, attitudes around uh, different issues. People tend to take more, uh, pay more attention to things that immediately affect them. And I, I don't think there's an understanding of, of uh, a lot, and I'll, as a gay man, I'll speak for 
the so-called gay community. I think there's a lot of time and experience in understanding how transgender issues um, affect them and the members of that community. Um, even calling it a community it, it is sort of like stretching the meaning of the terminology there. Um, I have uh, experience, I have I've witnessed um, some more uh, obvious forms of discrimination and um, bias against transgender people in the gay and lesbian community from some individuals. So I think that's something we that needs to continually address and raise. Um, the, the Pride March that happens now, that's a huge turnout because it's more of a celebration. Um, in the earlier days, when it was one of struggle, um, it, it was harder for people to uh, attend. It was a smaller uh, turnout. So um, people, are, um, when it comes to issues of, uh, of conflict like that, um, people are, have a tendency to, to pull back. And I think that we need to make that outreach. We need to have those seconds. conversations. We need to do that education. And we can't just wait to when it's pride much. Uh, it needs to happen way before that. Hi, I'm Jane Lee. I'm a
that it was having on us in communities around the, around the country. Um, so that's a really, they play a really important role. And as mayor, I would want to continue to work with them to advance that agenda, uh, to work with them on the work that they do, not only advocating on larger issues, but also advocating on behalf of individual citizens um, and, and trying to make sure that, that, that people in our community know that they're there, that they're a resource, and that they're fully supported by the city council and by the mayor uh, and the important work they do. Um, and also uh, appointing people uh, to that is one of the roles of the mayor. Um, and uh, we were all pleased that you were willing to step forward and serve as a young person in our community because we want to have a lot of representation from across the full spectrum of the community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, now the organizers, Jean and I, will ask one question each. I'm sorry, can I ask a question? Sorry. Okay, you go right ahead first. Um, hi, my name is Pam Hanna, and um, my question is, it's like a, it's a two-part question. Uh, the, it's mainly about the new police station that's being built. I'd like to know how each of you feel about the new police station being built, specifically um, about adding more jail cells to Northampton, um, understanding that Northampton is a place that um, you know young people come from the hill towns, um, maybe escaping you know young LGBTQ youth coming, um, ending up on the streets and sort of the you know, school to prison pipeline. If you know anything about that, how we feel about adding more jail cells in Northampton, um, and then also the physical structure of the building um, and sort of it's it's that it's going to be really overtaking two city blocks and how you'll. Um, maintain the look and feel of our downtown. Two pieces there. Okay, I think David. Okay. Well, I um, actually served on the on the police station building committee that did a lot of work in terms of siting and locating the police station, um, and that was a process that we actually we went through the full uh, central business architecture committee, um, which is a committee that was established to to make sure that new buildings downtown do fit in with the architecture of the building and. When first did the first presentation to the public on it, we did get a lot of feedback about the look of the building and how it presented itself. Um, and so uh, there was a lot of work done to go back to try to make the building fit in more. I know that it seems, it's right now you see it, it's very large and there's the old police station sitting down next to it. But when, when, the, else, when, the, when the new police station is completed, the old one will be torn down and there's actually a, um, uh, sort of a public plaza that's going to be built right there um, to sort of make it an open uh, place for people to be able to come in. There's bike parking, uh, there's pedestrian access, there's handicapped access, and then another feature is a community room, uh, which we didn't have previously in our old police station, to really make it a station that's not just for law enforcement, but it's for the community as well to use. I know that's been very successful in Amherst when they built their new station. In terms of the cells, they essentially, in the old station right now, um, people were handcuffed to the wall. Suspects were handcuffed to the wall. Oftentimes, the space was so cramped, you'd have victims uh, sitting five feet away from perpetrators because we didn't have the space. Uh, and it was not a place that was uh, uh, fair for yeah. victims or defendants. So there are holding cells that have been constructed, and they're actually holding cells that are built both for women and for men. Uh, but they're not long-term jail cells. They're holding cells for people that have been arrested to be processed. They'll still go through the same consortium with the sheriff's office. The sheriff's office has what's called a regional um, lockup that serves cities and towns and helps defray the cost of that at the Hampshire County House of Corrections. So there's not going to be any sort of long-term uh, jail cells in the building. It's more for the protection of, of both um, people that are accused of crimes and their victims that those cells will put in place. Thank you. Um, one of the, uh, the first things that I did it was 16, 18 years ago as a uh, new city council was take a tour of the existing police station. And back then it was an inadequate uh, facility. So having a new police, police station has been a goal of that department and of the city for, for some time. And in the, uh, the presentation from the building committee, they were always uh, presenting um, the in facility, an increased facility that would address the current level of need. Um, 
So I, what I, some of the, uh, the situations that David referred to in terms of uh, people being chained to pipes, and all that is true. It, it, it's trying to uh, treat people with dignity and kind of uh, separate some of those problems out. The concern I hear is that would that um, lend a, a kind of a, a predisposition to being uh, arresting people and holding people for um, unnecessarily or for other, other reasons and kind of reflect um, a, a sort of a, an oppression or a, a, a targeting one group of people. And that's something you always have to work with to make sure that is not the case. And so I would be very aggressive to make sure that policies are in place and there are uh, monitoring mechanisms to make sure that that isn't happening. In, in, a, in a related area, um, one of the things that I've done in the last couple of years, I've been a, a mentor of uh, the uh, community jail, the, the Hampshire County Jail, and working with inmates who are about to be released. So I, again, I know that from the personal level. I know I, I have a respect for the dignity of every life, and I would not let that situation that I think is your concern ever happen. Thank you. Okay, now the uh, organizers will ask one question each. Uh, I'd like to direct this question to, to David. The 2009 National Transgender Discrimination Survey by the National Center for Transgender Equality <coughs> and the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force found that 15% of Massachusetts transgender adults live on $10,000 a year or less. 20% of Massachusetts transgender adults were fired from their jobs, and 39% were not hired due to their gender identity. As mayor, how would you work to improve these statistics for trans people in the city of North Hampton? Thank you for the question, Beth. And, um, and it's interesting at the, at the uh, Trans Civil Rights Rally, um, this, this actually came up because there were, uh, the reference was made to several of the organizers, the key organizers of the event, who were actually unable to attend the event um, because they had to work that day and they didn't want to, they didn't want to take a day off from work for fear of losing their job uh, because it had been so hard for them to find employment uh, in the first place um, and for transgender people this, this issue, this precariousness of, of employment is, is, a, is an important one that we don't understand. Many people don't understand as we talk about this economy and the fact that there's so many people out of work. So it's an issue that we have to focus on here in the city. Obviously, we uh, talked about some of the bills at the national level and at the state level to address it. Um, you know, we do have local policies in place, and I think it takes leadership from the city, from, from the mayor's office, from city councilors. Uh, to, to work with people to make sure that uh, people uh, do have equal employment opportunities in our city um, and that there's education around these issues so that people feel that uh, they can have fair access to jobs and to accommodations um, and so that we don't have people that are living in poverty because of, um, uh, because of their identity and, 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 uh, and this issue. So the, again, it's, it's, a, it's one of the many statistics um, that, that are part of this issue, and, uh, and, I would, and I would work as mayor to try to address it um, in the ways that we could at the local level, um, but obviously working to advocate for laws at the state and federal level to really address this issue. Thank you. Thank you. Michael? Uh, again, thank you for the question. That, that is uh, uh, one, of, one of the main reasons why I included that in my opening remarks that um, the economic issues facing the gay and lesbian and transgender and bisexual community, uh, it definitely is a, a social justice issue. And um, it looks at different with different individuals and different aspects of the, of the population. Um, but we need to do everything possible to ensure that there isn't discrimination at the, uh, uh, the job place. We, we need to work hard to make sure that all individuals have access to training programs, that they have the support they have. I've, I've visited uh, transgender people in employment situations. I visited a uh, shop owner recently and listened to her concerns that she had with neighboring sh shop owners and some of the, uh, uh, the inappropriate behavior and the pressure that she feels. And we just need to step forward and make sure that the resources of the city other agencies in the city um, don't let things like that happen, so people don't feel isolated. And, um, um, we 
this is, a, as I said earlier, this is a very volatile uh, place to live with people with limited incomes. And we increasingly uh, <coughs> Yet, on the flip side, it's a very comfortable place in terms of uh, human and civil rights, and there's a lot more support in the other communities. So we need to really make sure that people who feel comfortable living here have the, uh, the supports economically to be able to stay. Saturday morning when I was holding the sign, and it was early in the morning, and 
so that there was a path, a pathway that connects right. from the roundhouse parking lot up to West Street. That was all run over for a week. So we got a neighborhood together, we cleared that all down, it's a bike path today. But that was a main activity for a lot of tracks. So there's, there's things that we can do to uh, clean up an area and make it uncomfortable for people to use and send that message. And I think a lot of the safety issues are related to drugs. Okay, thank you very much. At this point, we're going to close the audience questions and go to the candidates for their closing remarks. We're using the reverse order as, as was determined at the beginning. So Mr. Barnsley will start first. Two minutes, please. Again, I want to thank the organizers for putting on this afternoon's forum, and I want to thank you all for coming out here in a, uh, a winter type of day and staying for the duration. Uh, since my teen years, I have been a, uh, a foot soldier as well as at times a leader for human rights and social justice issues. I have worked um, extensive, extensively on GLP issues, uh, and I have uh, worked in the public schools on a, on a lot of uh, social justice issues, including uh, founding the Hate Straight Alliance, promoting the Safe Schools Program, initiating a policy policy the schools. Uh, uh, in terms of this, the city, I have uh, took the lead in bringing in the Human Rights Commission here in Northampton. Job 
jobs, uh, like having a safe and livable and green city, um, like having great public schools so that all of our kids can get a great education, um, and working on, the, on tough issues like protecting our environment, uh, keeping our streets clean and safe. So thank you, I appreciate this opportunity. I hope you'll visit my website, and I hope I can earn your support on November 8th. Thank you very much for coming. Have a good evening.